Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get started, um, and folks can join us as they will. Um, so, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Um, I, my name is Julia Brown, and I'm the coordinator for the U.S. Household Finance Initiative, which is a research initiative at Innovations for Poverty Action. Um, uh, joining me on the line is Cynthia Campbell, who I think you already know, most of you, um, and she is the Director of Innovation Labs at the Finding Research Institute. Um, so I'm going to be talking today about the Pay Yourself Back product, which IPA and Filene are working on incubating as part of Filene's Accessible Financial Services Incubator. I'm not going to go into the background on the incubator too much, since I think you all are already a familiar with that, but I will go through some details of the product, um, and hopefully I'll be able to address uh, many of the questions that we've been getting from potential testers. Um, uh, so just as a little bit of housekeeping, uh, you should be able to use the controls to the right of your screen uh, to mute yourself um, or to turn your video on or off uh, and send chat messages to the group as well. Um, I'm going to leave everyone on mute for the time being, um, just to minimize background noise. But if you have a question, please type it in. Um, also, I think it's probably better for folks to keep their video off if anybody was thinking about turning it on, uh, as that will help minimize any bandwidth issues that we might have. Um, if you can't hear me, or if you're having trouble, or you can't see my screen, um, please just throw a note up in the chat feature, um, and uh, I'll try to fix it. Um, so uh, after the webinar is over, the resources that I'll be talking about uh, and the video of this webinar will be made available. Um, uh, and so we'll send out an email about where those will be accessible. And I'm a little hoarse today, so I apologize um, if I have to clear my throat part way through. But um, hopefully you all be able to hear me uh, pretty well. Um, Um, so I'm not going to go too much into the details of the Pay Yourself Back product since I think you all are already familiar with the basics. Um, but the idea is simply that in order to address low savings rates and help people build assets, we wanted to see if we could leverage the habit of regular payments that people were already making towards loans um, and turn that into a regular savings habit. So there are a couple of key features to the product. First is the pre-commitment from your clients or your members um, to continue making those quote unquote payments into savings after their loan obligations have ended. Um, so the member pays off the loan, but then since they're already used to budgeting for that payment, they keep right on going. Only that money is now going towards their savings account. So the second key feature of Pay Yourself Back is that the movement of money to the savings account at the end of the loan term is automated. So to take advantage of the repayment habit that's built during the loan term, it's important to make the process for depositing funds into savings as similar to the loan payment process as possible. So ideally, once the member's loan term ends, they would continue to send their check or make a deposit in the same fashion as before, but their funds are automatically routed to their savings account. Um, so this is all about just reducing the number of steps the person has to take in order to save, uh, as the more additional steps um, uh, that someone has to go through, the more likely they are to stop saving. Um, so I want to spend the bulk of time during this webinar going a bit deeper into log the logistics of what participating in this pilot and rolling this product out might look like. So the very first thing that we've gotten a few questions about is which loan product to apply this to. Um, so in our previous smaller pilot, uh, the credit unions we worked with actually applied it to any loan that their that their members had. So unsecured loans, auto loans, um, home equity, et cetera. Um, and so we actually think that that's one of the advantages of the product and that it can be added to pretty much any kind of loan. It's very flexible. Um, the only caveat to that is that it takes a while for people to build a habit. Um, so we think it's likely that adding this to a longer term loan, so maybe six to 12 months at least, 
um, in terms of the term, is more likely to have an impact on the amount of savings that people are able to build, um, since there will be more time for that budgeting habit to become really ingrained in people's you know, thought processes. Um, but that hasn't been proven yet. It's, it's a hunch we have. Um, so we are open to credit unions or other folks who want to try the shorter loan. Um, so the next thing we've gotten several questions about is um, how to choose members to target for this. Um, so we think this can be nicely added uh, kind of automatically to members who are taking out a brand new loan. So that can just be part of the loan from the beginning. Um, but it also can be offered to people who have had the loan for a while. Um, so we did, however, learn in our past pilot that when people got the pay yourself back offer towards the end of their loan, they often were looking forward to having that extra cash free to spend. Um, and they weren't almost, they weren't always too excited about putting it towards savings, which makes total sense. Um, so we think that making that offer a little bit earlier on, so maybe six or 12 months out, uh, should be more successful because that gives people a little bit more time to shift their thinking um, around the length of the time that they'll be making their first payments and really set that goal for savings up for themselves. So the next thing that I'll touch on a little bit is automation. Um, so as I mentioned before, the main idea is to make this as seamless as possible. Uh, so the members don't have to change how they've been making payments. There's no extra effort. Um, so we think that the best way to set this up is to do an ACH transfer into the member savings account. Um, I know that there might be a couple of DMP providers on the line, um, and Cynthia may have mentioned to you the difficulties we faced doing this with a DMP provider in our last pilot. Um, so they basically had to set up the transfer with um, each bank that each of their clients had, which made it a lot less streamlined and a lot more um, heavy lifting for the, the partner we were working with. Um, so it's obviously a lot easier when you're working with just one credit union in this case. Um, the other question that we have been getting um, is whether or not it's necessary to set up a new savings account um, for the pilot um, for members who sign up for Pay Yourself Back. So um, that is what we did with the partner that we worked with previously, um, but uh, it's obviously a bit more logistically difficult. We would love it if you could because it makes things a little bit easier to track. It's easy to tell, okay, everybody who has that kind of account um, is, a, is part of this pay yourself back thing, but um, we, we don't require it uh, so long as the participating credit unions and others are able to track who has enrolled in the pay yourself back product and how much they've deposited. Um, I did want to mention that for those of you who do decide to open new savings accounts as part of this, um, it's important that those new accounts have comparable interest rates to other accounts that are currently being offered by your credit union, um, because we found in our last pilot we actually had um, uh, member services representatives who weren't excited and weren't willing to encourage their, their members to um, take up the Pay Yourself Back product because uh, there were other um, accounts with the same credit union that offered better interest rates. Um, so you just want to make sure that uh, none of those, those different accounts are conflicting or competing excuse me, with each other. So then we get to making offers. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the sooner the better to give people time to plan. Um, then there are some options in terms of how much the member wants to save. So obviously, we want people to save as much as possible, but we also recognize that getting to the end of the loan can be a really big relief. Um, and people may want to have a little bit more breathing room, a little bit of a, a, a reward for themselves for having made it to the end of that loan. So we think it's fine to allow members to choose to save only, say, 50% or whatever the percentage they want of the amount that they had been paying on their loan. Um, in terms of making um, of marketing, um, we did a lot of phone calls in the previous pilot to get the word out, um, but this was extremely time consuming and wasn't terribly successful. Um, so Filene has created some absolutely gorgeous brochures um, that credit unions can use in mailings or in branch. Um, and uh, we'll be able to distribute that. Uh, and we also think that member services reps should be encouraged to make offers in person whenever possible. Um, 
So those 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 brochures will be made available um, shortly after this webinar. Um, so I'll touch briefly on tracking and reporting. Um, so we expect you to be able to track whether someone has been made an offer and through what means. So was it a brochure, or did they get a phone call, whatever it is. Um, and then, of course, whether the person chose to sign up or not. Um, so, And then once people have enrolled, we want to collect data on the amount and frequency of their savings deposits, as well as their monthly balances. Um, and then, of course, we are also very interested in the more qualitative results you have, so your feedback on what's working well, what's not working so well, and the ideas you have. And we'll be providing templates um, for the data collection as well. Some of you may, may have seen those already in, uh, in the toolkit that we've, we've been circulating. Um, so I lastly, I want to talk a bit about rolling pay yourself out, pay yourself back out as a randomized controlled trial. So you may be aware that uh, in addition to the pilot with Filene, we're interested in seeing if credit unions are interested in participating in a randomized trial of this product. So this is optional. Um, you can do the pilot without doing the randomized trial. But our hope is that this would be a positive experience for the credit unions and others that do decide to participate. Um, so first, what is a randomized trial? Um, so randomized controlled trials, randomized evaluations, randomized trials, or RCTs, as we use the abbreviation, they're all the same thing. So I apologize if I jump between terminology, um, uh, but they're, they're all the same, they're all different words for the same concept. Um, the idea is simply that study participants are randomly assigned to receive an intervention, in this case, pay yourself back, or not receive that intervention. And after they get the intervention, the outcomes between the two groups are then compared. So you might be a little bit more familiar with this idea from drug trials. If I wanted to see, for example, if a new cancer drug was effective, um, I'd give it to some cancer patients but not others, and then I would see whether the ones who got the drug got better faster. So the purpose of this is to allow us to know for sure that any impacts we see, either the cancer patients getting better in my drug example or people saving more for pay yourself back, are in fact due to the program itself and not to any other factors. Um, so from IPA's point of view, and, and um, there's a lot of increased emphasis on doing this kind of research, um, we think this kind of evaluation is quite critical because it allows us to know whether the program is really working or if we might just be wasting our money and resources on something that's not very effective. Um, so randomized trials can be applied to answer a number of different types of questions, not just whether it works or not. Um, so we can also compare features of the product to see which of those features are most effective. Um, so randomly choosing, choosing who receives which feature. Um, just as an example, uh, on the on the screen, there should be um, some some different types of, of features that we would be interested in testing. Um, so, for example, we are of course interested in testing does this work or not. Um, but then we're also interested in looking at what's better, um, an open-ended uh, savings where the person just keeps saving indefinitely or a goal-based savings, where they set a goal for themselves and then stop saving once they've met that goal. Or um, we'd also be interested in presenting people with default amounts to save, for example, $35 a month, um, versus letting the, them pick the amount that they want to save to see whether these changes lead to more or less savings over time. Um, so lastly, we'd be interested in looking at timing, so what the best time is to offer the Pay Yourself Back product, or whether there might be a savings incentive that we could include, say, an interest rate that's held in the loan or something like that that, in, that could induce higher take-up. Um, and of course, if there are additional questions that you are interested in exploring, we would be happy to work with you on that to figure out how best to answer your questions. Um, so last slide on, on randomized evaluation, because I know a lot of people blaze over when I start talking about this, and I apologize. Um, if you decide to roll Pay Yourself Out Back as a randomized trial, we will work with you to design any research protocols that are necessary and train your staff, and then we would provide you with an in-depth analysis of your data so that you can understand more fully the impact of this program on your members. 
Um, so a little bit on partner responsibilities. Um, so what would you have to do? Um, so just to quick note, this would be for both the regular pilot and then also the RCT as well. Um, so we expect you to be able to commit staff time to extend offers, set up tracking systems, et cetera, um, and then track offers and client data over the duration of the pilot, as well as conduct any ongoing communications with your members that might be necessary. Um, and then, so you would be reporting the data and your assessment of the progress of this pilot to us on a regular basis. Um, the time frame for rolling this out is flexible, because um, we understand that you know, it takes different folks are on different schedules and it's tax time and there's a lot going on. Um, but we would love to get this started as soon as possible. Um, the pilot is supposed to run for about 18 months. I did want to quickly note that um, the only difference between the, the pilot and the RCT in terms of um, tracking responsibilities is that for the randomized trial, we would ask you to report data on people who did not receive the offer for the pay yourself back product as, the, as well as those who did actually receive that offer. So there would be a little bit of extra data to be collected. Um, other than that, it would be very similar, the same kind of data. So lastly, and I'll wrap up, um, we are here to help and we want to support you in getting this out the door. Um, so Filene and IPA, we are both available to answer questions. Um, the partners that we worked with for the previous pilots have also graciously um, ex um, uh, volunteered to be available to answer your questions as well. Um, we have the toolkits that I mentioned, both, uh, um, sorry, and the, and the templates that I mentioned, including the uh, marketing template um, and the reporting template. Um, and so we would be very excited if you want to reach out and we would be happy to give you any support that you need. Um, so that's pretty much all I had to talk about. Um, and I will let Cynthia add anything that she wants to. Um, and then we will open it up for questions. Um, me okay? Can you hear uh, me okay, I Julia? Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Well, hello, everybody, and thank you again for taking your time on a, a Friday afternoon before the GAC conference to learn a little bit more about this product. Um, and it's an exciting product to know that we can help folks of modest means build assets and be able to help themselves in their next financial emergency. What's very exciting, too, is that um, being able to work under this Ford Foundation grant, that they chose the American Credit Union movement to be the proving ground for products that are great for low to moderate income folks. And, and that's a big honor. And I appreciate your willingness to help me and help Feline and IPA make this a success. Um, there's nothing better than really helping our members where they need it most. And really this product, um, it's an easy uptake product and it's really mobilizing savings for your members. So I appreciate your willingness to take a peek at it, learn a little bit more. And um, if you'd like to participate in the trial, there'll be um, a simple agreement um, between Feline and the credit union to sign, and then if you're doing the RCT piece, there would be a different agreement between yourselves and IPA. So I encourage you to give both a, an interest, and if you um, are committing to it and want to shoot me an email um, at Cynthia C at Bileen.org, I'll get the um, agreement to you straight away. And as Julia said, both IPA and Feline are here to help. So if you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I could take on this project, all these new things to do, um, we are great at making marketing tools. And so we have some kind of out-of-the-box things that you can add your logo to, but we can also um, talk with you and design things special for you as well. So um, know that we'll take on some of the workload of getting marketing pieces to you and answering any questions you may have. We can hold webinars to do staff training, whatever it's going to take to make it easier on you to say yes. So uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Julia to handle questions. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, so I think most of you should be unmuted, so um, uh, you can either uh, chat a question in. That's probably the easiest so that people don't talk over each other.
Any questions from folks? I think um, Jamie Chase might have one. Um, I'm not seeing it in my window. Um, um, credit unions to consider participating in this. Sorry, can you repeat the question? I you were on mute. No problem. Um, my question is: Are CDFI certified credit unions um, particularly well suited to participate in this? Um, I think that would be. Um, Fantastic. I think we, in general, are interested in targeting low to moderate income communities because they're typically the ones who have, um, well, everybody actually across the United States has pretty low levels of savings in general. Um, but I think part of the uh, reasoning behind developing this product was seeing that a lot of folks were taking out loans uh, to cover expenses that they could potentially cover um, by having a little bit of extra cushion in their savings. Um, and so, yeah, I think that um, CDFI credit unions who uh, serve lower, lower to moderate income communities would be, um, and it would be perfect uh, participants. Excellent. I have um, one additional question. Are the participants allowed to um, cite their inclusion as a as a tester in the project in their future grant awards to um, to add to the credibility of their work that they're doing. So if they're submitting a two million dollar CDFI uh, essay award in the upcoming year, may they list that they are a participant in this filing research project? I would say yes, Cynthia. I'll make sure that that's all right with filing. Can you hear me? Yep. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, yes. That would be absolutely okay. We would encourage it. Um, I think it would be a great, uh, I don't know if they're called resumes, but application builder um, to <laughs> say they've participated in a Ford Foundation grant with Filene, with IPA. Um, those are all great names to throw out there. Yeah. From our point of view, the more more people who know about it, the better. So we'd be happy to have you do that. It's a great idea. Are there any additional questions? Well, if you're shy to ask in a big group, certainly um, give Julia or myself a call and we'll be happy to answer anything that you may have. Yeah, and as I mentioned, uh, this webinar will be available as well as the other resources that I mentioned. So um, keep an eye out for those and uh, we're, we'd be very excited to work with all of you. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll sign off unless there's any other questions. Great. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.